Good evening. My name is Chris Tooley, Principal of the Netherhall School. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to our induction evening. For those of you who already have children at the school, welcome back. For those for whom this is the first event as part of our school family, thank you for joining us and entrusting your sons and daughters to our care. Of course, under normal circumstances, I'd be here with you for this event. However, I'm currently 250 miles away in Durham for my daughter's graduation ceremony. So I will be leaving you in the very capable hands of Mr. Carlton, who leads our transition work and heads up year seven, and Mr. Berry and Mr. Marsawi, our deputy principals. Netherhall School and the Oaks College are special places. Our staff are fully committed to getting to know you and your sons and daughters over the coming years. We have re redesigned our curriculum, reimagining the lessons to inspire and intrigue. Our facilities are superb and we have developed an unparalleled extracurriculum programme to add to our offer. In addition to our normal school production at Christmas, evening of dance in February, Arts Festival, Shakespeare Festival and Pride World Cup, this year we are also introducing a new and exciting event, our Activities Week. This week planned for the end of the summer term will involve a wide range of activities designed to celebrate our school curriculum, our location in Cambridge and to add to our students' experiences. There really is a huge amount to look forward to. And now, without further ado, I'm pleased to hand over to Mr Carlton for the remainder of the evening. I very much look forward to meeting with you in the months and years to come. Okay, I feel like just saying thank you, Mr Tooley. It's the strangest handover I've ever done um, since being here. But anyway, it's uh, very good for Mr Tooley to uh, leave that message for us. Um, as he says, my name is uh, Mr Carlton. And uh, amongst other things, I have responsibility here at Netherhall for transition from primary to secondary school. Uh, Mr. Tooley says I'll be with you for the remainder of the evening. That's not quite true. Um, I am going to be ably assisted by uh, Miss Morrison over to my left, who is one of our um, SALS school achievement leaders, head of house of Davis, and uh, also by uh, two of our current year seven students who will certainly um, be able to give their expert opinion of what life is like here at Netherhall. So this evening I will be interested, or we will be introducing you to some of the key people here at Netherhall, explaining some of the practices and procedures, and hopefully reassuring you that the transition to secondary is something to approach, not just with confidence, but with excitement and eager anticipation. Now, I do apologise for the delay that there has been in announcing the houses. That has been out of our control, but I can assure you that tomorrow, in your inboxes, your email inboxes, you will be receiving the information about which house you have been allocated to. As you can see from the slide, there are nine tutor groups in each house. These are vertical tutor groups, which means each one has a mixture of year sevens, eights, nines, tens and elevens. And it might seem daunting to be in with older children, but you soon realise they're friendly and actually they're there to help you. You'll spend the first 30 minutes with the, of the day with your tutor group, and there are a variety of activities that you will do, including discussions, form challenges and a quiz. And it's also a time when the tutor and mentor check that you're OK and ready to start your lessons. Now each form has a tutor and uh, attached to the forms there are also mentors to support with some of the work that is done. And so with uh, um, up to two adults working with a group of about 25 students, they soon get to know you very well. And the tutors and mentors would be the first people that you would go to if you're having trouble with anything. And for parents, it's the, uh, the first point of contact if there are any questions or issues you've got here at the school. But each house is run by a school achievement leader, or SAL as we call them, 
and these are also great people to go to if you need help. Mr Woods, one of our assistant principals, oversees all four houses and he works very closely with Mrs White, who you will have met as you signed in in the foyer. She's just there closing the door, so uh, I'm sure she'd be happy to give you a wave and have a little chat if uh, you need to. Uh, she leads a team of people who are dedicated to helping and supporting students and dealing with any issues that arise. The important thing to remember is that there are lots of people in the school, both staff and students, who will look out for you, keep you safe, and do their best to make sure that you are happy and successful at Netherhall. Now, as well as being in a particular house and tutor group, you'll be in different teaching groups. There will actually be a number of different teaching groups, one for traditional academic subjects, such as English, math, science, the humanities and languages. There's one for art, music and drama, one for technology, and one for PE. That means, if my maths is correct, that along with your tutor group, you will be in five different groups throughout the day and uh, throughout the week. Now, this will allow you to mix and make friends with a wide range of people. Now, it's important that the students are in the right groups, the groups that will give them an appropriate level of challenge and ensure they make progress. We gather a lot of information from primary schools, both from assessments that have been done, but also from the teachers themselves. And when students come to us, we already have a good idea of their academic potential, their attitude, their behavior, and how they get on socially. And so all of this information together ensures that there is an easier and smoother transition from primary school, that students are supported and make good progress, and that teachers develop productive relationships with the students. Now, one of the challenges with the transition from primary school is the changing relationship of parents with teaching staff. Now, many of you as parents will be used to uh, being there on the school playgrounds, seeing their class teacher on a daily basis, and the uh, small community of parents that you get have sorry, that you have got to know over the uh, primary phase. Now that uh, secondary school starts, you'll drop them off at the school gates, or they'll walk or cycle independently with their friends, and you might feel a little bit isolated from what's going on at the school. Now, we are doing our very best to uh, ensure that communication between home and school remains strong. Um, and so to bridge this gap, we have developed our parental intranet, or ALICE, as it is known. And this platform allows both parents and students to enjoy access to a whole range of information and opportunities. So let's have a little look and see what you will, what you will see when you sign up. So ALICE enables instant communication between home and school and gives you an overview of your child's timetable their academic progress, their attendance, and their conduct. And at the screen that you can see now is what you will see once you have logged in. And from here, you can link to various aspects of your child's school life. You'll receive notification of rewards or behavior entries. You can see the personal details of your child and the key members of staff who provide their pastoral support. You can check on the homework that's been set, track the enrichment activities that are available, and also track the pride points. That's the reward system that we have. Monitoring attendance and behavior is simple, even showing what they bought at the canteen, if you really want to know. Now, as you can appreciate, this is a very powerful tool, which enables you to keep up with the daily flow of life here at Netherhall. In your admission pack, you will have received details about how to sign up and log on to Alice. And I would encourage you to make it a priority to sign up just as soon as you can. I think there are details, further details are emailed out to you later on this term. So you may not be able to sign up immediately, but uh, do look out for those emails. Um, I would also encourage you, while I remember it, talking about the admission pack, if you have not completed your admission pack and returned it to the school, please do so as soon as possible. 
We've got some spares in a box in the foyer, so uh, feel free to take one as you leave. And uh, it'd be great if you haven't done so to uh, send it in with your child on Monday so that we can have those, we can get all the information onto the school system so that everything will be ready once your child starts in September. With regards to the student remote access, they will be um, automatically able to sign up once they've set up their school account, their school computer account, which will happen on their first day in September. Now it's, uh, it's enough from me for the moment, so I'm going to hand over to one of our students, and uh, this is Katie. Hello ladies, gentlemen, and soon to be Year 7 students. My name is Katie and I'm speaking to you today to share with you my experience of Year 7 here at Neverhorn and hopefully reassure of you all coming next year. This year I've really enjoyed making new friends and taking up new clubs. There's a lot going on at Neverhall all the time, but don't worry, you quickly get used to how busy the school is. So, on the first day, Year 7 was the only year group in lessons, and that was really helpful because it allowed me to get to know my way around the school and work out where everything was. So when everyone else came a few days later, it wasn't too overwhelming because I knew where I needed to be and when. On the first day, we did some bonding exercises. Building a paper tower with people you've just met is a really amazing way to get to know them. I have to say, the competition was very fierce and our towers got extremely high. I also enjoyed going through the homework system on the first day, as it's quite different to primary school. Here everything's online, but it works really well. I get notified the day before the due date of any homework, I can see everything I have to do in one click, and it's easy to work with. And I can add documents, photos, anything from just Google Classroom. The first day is a really great experience, and my advice to you guys doing your first day in September is try not to get overwhelmed. There's a lot of information going to be thrown at you, but you don't have to remember every single thing. Your teachers can help you later. The second piece of advice is just to enjoy it because it's really fun and you don't get this experience again. During Year 7, there are many amazing opportunities for everyone to take part in, I've been and I've been lucky enough to do some this year. In September, I joined the Latin Club with my friend, which was completely new to me and also happened to be the first club I joined. Latin now has its family feel as there are only five members, including me. We always have a lot of laughs shouting at the computer doing quizzes. During lessons, history especially, some Latin text sometimes comes up and we always discuss this afterwards and go over how we would pronounce each word. There are so many clubs and if one you want isn't available, you can make it. I wish I had more time to go to clubs because each time the clubs change, I want to go to almost every one, but there's not enough time. So my choice is to choose wisely and stick to your choice. Also, I was fast enough during the cross country to be selected to run in the district race, which was great to be a part of. When I turned up to a training session one wet Wednesday, me and only one other year seven turned up. We bonded slipping our way up the hill and we're still really good friends now. On the day, the atmosphere was amazing and my class was really supportive. At break, people came to watch and check in with the runners and when I crossed the finish, it was the best feeling to know that I'd raised my best race and hear my friends cheering me on. After just a few months, my class was really supporting me and I'm really sad we have to get new ones in September. I really enjoy working with my class. We've become a seven-man family. Again, at an event at St. Eve, I felt the amazing family atmosphere. Coming into the finish of my race, the 1500 meters, which I've never done before. To have friends to share highs and lows with is the best feeling ever. And that atmosphere is here by the bucket list, with so, so much to get involved with. Also, I took part in the match challenge, and when you get your score back, you feel a re real sense of pride and achievement, and collecting your certificate with your friends and congratulating everyone is just another example of when the family atmosphere has become apparent. There are really too many to name. So when you come to Year 7 in September, my advice to all of you is this. Take every single opportunity you can, grasp it with both hands and go wherever the journey takes you. It will pay off and leave you with so many memories that last a lifetime. I was really nervous when I started Year 7, but never was so supportive that I settled in really easily. Finally, I'd like to say thank you. I hope I've given you something to take away from this and calm some of your nerves. I look forward to seeing you all next year. Okay, we're going to move on and think a little bit about attendance. So you can see on the slide that good attendance, as you know, is essential for success in school. It breeds good habits for life and our target is for every student to achieve at least 96% attendance over the year. This means avoiding appointments and holidays during school hours and many of our students achieve 100% attendance even in an anomalous year due to COVID. 
Excellent attendance is rewarded in term lease celebration assemblies with an attendance colour at the end of the year if they have 100% still. And ultimately, the reward will be excellent exam results at the end of year 11. Now you can track your child's attendance on ALICE and on the system as it's been explained. And as well as the overall figure, you can see that it will break down the attendance for you by term and you can see attendance on a day-to-day -day basis and you can track that week by week. Students are registered every morning in their tutor group and their tutor will see them as a matter of course. A register is also taken at the beginning of every lesson throughout the day and if a child arrives late at school in the morning or has to leave early during the day for whatever reason they will need to come through reception and sign in and out so that we know exactly where they are at all times. Similarly in safeguarding terms all visitors to school must sign in and out at reception and wear an ID visitor badge throughout their time with us on the site. They will also be accompanied by a member of staff to ensure that they are in the correct areas and that all the children are safe at all times. Now we do understand, more than anything at the moment, that sometimes people do fall ill. And when there is illness, there are procedures to follow in order to make sure that we are fully informed of everything that is happening. So if your, school, if your child is too ill to attend school, we certainly don't want them to come in. We certainly don't want them to come in unnecessarily. But if that is the case, we ask that you phone the school before 8.30 a.m. and leave a message on the attendance answer phone. If your child becomes ill during the day, then they will be assessed by a member of our support staff and you may be contacted to collect them. You'll certainly be contacted to give your permission for them to go home. Of course, one of the things that many students worry about when they're starting secondary school is the issue of bullying. Now, unfortunately, as we all know, bullying can happen anywhere and in any school and in any workplace at any point in life. Now, the question that we ask is not so much does it happen, but what do we do when it happens? Now, thankfully, incidents at Never Hall are rare, but when they do occur, we take them incredibly seriously. We have a strong and robust anti-bullying policy and the pastoral system from vertical tutor groups through to the tutors, to the school achievement leaders and the pastoral office means that any incidents are dealt with quickly and as robustly as possible. Of course, we're not mind readers, so we don't see everything that goes on and we don't necessarily know at the time that something has happened and we can only act when students tell us what is going on. So if there is any bullying that is experienced or any unpleasantness, we ask then that in those cases that you tell us what is going on. There is a facility for students to do that, whether it is aimed at them or at anyone else, they may have witnessed something, for example, and it's important that that is reported. Now, to help promote anti-bullying, we also have a student group in school, the NABC, which stands for the Neverhall Anti-Bullying Community who meet on a regular basis and in their work they also encourage a positive ethos throughout the school and support any students who might be feeling vulnerable or who want to contribute to building and developing on all of that work that's been done. Now as an offshoot of that, social media can be great fun as we all know and there are good reasons for the many platforms out there but we also know that many of those platforms have age restrictions for very good reasons. Now too often we find that comments made online break into arguments which are then brought into school and 
and unpicking these issues, which are actually nothing to do with school, can be incredibly time consuming for the partial team and other staff, and it does prevent us often from addressing other matters that are school based. For most platforms, you need to be 13 to use it. For some, you should be 16. Please, could we ask that you discourage your child from setting up an account? If for whatever reason you deem it appropriate for your child to be using social media, please be aware that you need to be taking responsibility for monitoring what they do and say on it to try to avoid any relational conflict within school. As we move into behaviour, which is also part of the ALICE system, ALICE can be used to track behaviour incidents that happen. In the event that your child might be involved in any poor behaviour, for example, the internet ensures that you'll know about it before they return home. Hopefully you won't need to use this facility too often. Rather than a mass behaviour entries, it's much better to collect rewards. However, the facility is there and we do urge you to engage with that so you're fully aware of what your child is doing throughout the school day. On the plus side, and much more of our emphasis, there are rewards. Now, pride points are tracked on Alice, and they are given for excellent work, excellent effort, and excellent behavior. Students also get pride points for attendance, wearing the correct uniform, and bringing the correct equipment, and showing that they're prepared for their learning. So basically, anything that constitutes a positive contribution to the school community will earn a pride point and in exceptional cases, more than one. Now you can track, as it says on the screen, your child's pride point journey throughout the year and those totals are available on a step-by-step -step basis. And you'll see how pride points build up over time. There are extra rewards to be earned on certain key points during the year, but all the pride points collectively will contribute towards the house competitions that take place and are tracked through the daily bulletin and through form time each week. So there is a competitive sense to it as well. Now the pride pledge is also a very important aspect of our reward system. Now the pride pledge underpins and supports the type of students we're seeking to develop. Well-rounded, caring, inspiring individuals who are part of our school community. Now it helps us to monitor and look at the students' overall growth and contribution to school. It falls into five key categories, with these being personal excellence, respect and friendship, inspiration, <laughs> determination and courage, and equality. There are three levels that can be achieved <clears throat> in every category and the aim is that we would hope as many students as possible would reach the category of gold by the time they finish year 11. Many of the criteria can also be achieved right from the beginning of year 7 so that journey will begin from September onwards and like representing the school in sports and other competitions, any involvement in extracurricular life or in the broader school life will be recognised from the beginning. Now, contributing positively to school also includes activities done outside the classroom, as I've just mentioned. So some of the best and the most valuable experiences students have take place at lunchtime or after school, or actually on a trip. Being part of a club or joining a team, as Katie talked about, or taking part in a special event that happens through the year, will develop a whole host of skills. And it will help children to make friends and ensure they quickly become part of our Neverhall community. This slide shows just some of the activities a year seven could become involved in. There's no expectation they would do them all, honestly. We haven't got time, of course, to talk about every single club, and it may be that there are others that will start in September that will be new, but 
there are a range to cater for a range of different types of students and types of people. So hopefully they will find something that they enjoy. And there is no limit to what we can offer in terms of extracurricular activities. If there is a club, for example, that a student would like to do and we don't run it yet, then they need to tell us. And there are things that we will develop based on student input and often are led by the students themselves. So please do feel free to give you um, that feedback. Now, I'm going to step back for a moment and I'm going to hand over to our second student speaker for the evening, which is Amani. Hello everyone, my name is Amani and I'm in Year 7. I'm also here to tell you about the wonderful opportunities Neville offers and how they keep any worried soon-to-be Year 7s and parents feel welcome. And there's a lot to go through. For example, during form time, the school gives you these handy form books, and inside is your timetable, which is very useful and won't crease up, and also an overview map of the school layout with room names to help you navigate if you're unsure. However, if you're confused in any way, just ask any teacher during break and they'll help you out for sure. And, as mentioned by Katie before, you get to have a couple days of just year sevens to tour the school and get used to its massive buildings. And for any worried parents, there's the new online Alice system, which was discussed, where you can see your child's behaviour reports, pride points, homework and assessment grades at any time. There's also a report a concern button on the website. So if you see anything regarding student welfare or bullying concerns, but you're uncomfortable talking about it, you can privately report it to the school team. There's a variety of different clubs available at Neverhall for all throughout the year. If you like sports, there are clubs such as hockey, football, rugby, badminton, and even golf. And if you're not into that type, there are, club, uh, there are other clubs like chess club, pop choir, drama, games club, and even crochet club. Cool, isn't it? And for any of these clubs, they supply with the necessary equipment needed so you don't have to bring yours. Plus, the teachers running the clubs are really nice. The experience feels very welcoming and sometimes you even get to make friends with awesome people. Amazingly, there are even clubs and clubs and activities at break and lunchtime if you're willing to miss it. An amazing part about Neverhall is the sheer vastness of their shield. Field, sorry. Maybe in primary, you argue with other students about where you can play, but with a field this big, that rarely ever happens. There are a few, full, few football pitches you can play on if you're lucky enough to get them and play on them. And on the topic of sporty things, there are many sports and athletic competitions you, that you can be in at Neverhall. For example, the Pride World Cup, a six-a-side football competition with two subs, which I will also be competing in, and sports festival, an inter-house competition, which is athletic events such as running, javelin, and hurdle, as well as a couple striking and fielding games. And you can't forget the classic games such as tug of war and egg and spoon race. Finally, there is also the Jubilee Cup, an inter-school athletics competition. Plus, during key lessons, the equipment will be far better than the ones at primary. It really does make a difference. I'm sure quite a few of you may be interested in our, in our school productions and events we do over here. And the quality is something you won't have seen before. If you enjoy dancing and are brave enough to do it, you will love being in the evening and dance. When I saw it, my mind was blown at how synchronised and intricate it was. If you want to mix a bit of drama, art and music, the Arts Festival is one event you don't want to miss. It's a mixture of an art exhibition with several music auditions and some Shakespeare and drama acts. Each one that I saw was incredible. Lastly, for purely just year sevens, is the Greek Metamorphosis competition, which challenges your acting skills and your playwriting and interpretation skills. There is also the French spelling bee, if you really want to test your knowledge and speed. Thank you all for listening to my speech, and I hope I reassured some of you, even just a tiny bit. Have a wonderful day, and I also look forward to seeing everyone next year. Thank you. Thank you, Amani. Now, just going back to Alice, one of the key features is the assessment page. For each subject, you can see the target for your child and their current level of achievement. Now, the target levels are sent, cent uh, sorry, set centrally by a governmental organisation and are based on prior attainment. The targets are there as a guide for students and their teachers, but are certainly not seen as a limit on what could be achieved. Hard work and effort result in many of our students exceeding the targets. 
Assessments are carried out regularly and students' levels are updated accordingly. The information you see is therefore always live. By clicking on the detail button, you're taken to a description of the levels, showing where your child currently stands and what they need to do to step up to the next level. There are hyperlinked tasks attached to each level which support the students in achieving this progress. Homework is set online and is accessible via Alice for both parents and students. This is an important part of learning, consolidating what has been covered in class and preparing for the next lesson. As such, it will help your child make good progress. In Year 7, we would expect each task to last about 30 to 40 minutes, although some longer tasks might be spread out over a number of lessons. Please encourage your child to manage their time well and complete homework promptly. For those students who struggle to access learning, support is also provided in school. Here are the timings of our school day. From September, registration will start promptly at 8.30, so students must arrive on time. This is also the time when assemblies take place. There are five lessons in the school day, each one lasting an hour, and the day finishes at three o'clock. The everyday equipment we would expect students to have include um, a rucksack, or a bag rather, big enough to carry books and files. A rucksack is uh, ideal for this. Blue or black pens, and a green pen for their own response to staff marking. Pencils, coloured pencils, rubber, sharpener, a ruler, and uh, there are more, a geometry set, there we go, and a scientific calculator. Um, mobile phones are allowed to be brought to school for safety reasons. We appreciate that many parents want students to have them when they're travelling to and from home. However, in school, phones are an unnecessary distraction. The rule is very simple. They must be switched off and out of sight at all times during the school day. So from 8.30 to 3 o'clock, no phones seen, no phones heard. Now, if you need to contact your child in an emergency, then you need to phone the school office. We've got a very good system which will enable us to get to your child as quickly as possible so that any messages can be passed on. And similarly, if any students need to contact home, they need to do so by going to the pastoral office and uh, accessing the phones from there. On to the uniform now. Our school uniform has been developed with parental and student input. It's designed to be both smart and practical and is a way of showing that students are proud to belong to the school. The uniform is ordered directly from our supplier, Sportswear International, and the jumper has the name of the house embroidered on it. So uh, I know many of you have been kind of itching to order the uniform already and uh, from tomorrow, once you know the house that your child has been allocated to you, you will be able to order that uniform. Please do check the, uh, that you are ordering correctly, making sure that you're clicking on the right jumper with the right house on it. If you uh, wish to reuse any item of uniform from an older sibling, um, including the previous jumper that we used to have without the embroidery on it, then that, of course, is perfectly acceptable. There are further details about the uniform in your admission pack and also on the school website. Please do read the uniform code carefully before making any purchase. Um, very easy for a student to persuade their parent that certain items are allowed. If you go back to the uh, what's on the website and what's in your assess um, admission pack, it is very clear what is allowed and what isn't allowed. So please trust that, not your child, okay? <laughs> Just so. Um, you hopefully will have noticed outside our um, parents and friends of Netherhall group are organising a collection of um, second-hand recycled uniform. So if you are going to struggle to buy a full uniform for whatever reason, please look out for details when this offer will go out. I believe there is also a form that you can sign up for just so that you can get like first, uh, um, first dibs on anything that goes out, or certainly first uh, um, uh, 
call on the, uh, when the information goes out. So uh, please, as you leave later on, do look out for that if you think that might be of benefit to you. Many schools operate a cashless system. You probably are familiar with that in the primary school where your child currently is. And I'm sure if you've been used to using it, you'll benefit, you'll, sorry, you'll appreciate the benefits that it brings. We use WisePay for our cashless system. And uh, again, details how to sign up and use it um, were sent out in the admission pack. You can set it up in advance of September. So once your child has been issued an ID card, which will be done um, as soon as we can um, within those first few days, um, they will be able to buy, uh, buy food from the canteen, assuming, of course, there is money in the account. So uh, please keep tabs on that one. This does not mean that the students can treat the canteen like a free buffet. I'm sure you'll be pleased to know. There is a limit to what they can spend each day, and you can monitor what they buy on the internet. If your child is eligible for free school meals, they will still use the card, so you can monitor what they eat, but no money will be taken from your account. And now, what will happen on Monday? Many of you maybe have been coming here thinking, what's happening on Monday? I don't want to know. That's what I want to know. Okay, so year six students will need to come in through the student entrance, as you can see marked there on the map, and walk up to the point indicated. On the windows of that building, we will stick details about class groups for the day. They'll be based on the houses, and uh, there'll be reminders of which house each student is in as well. If your child comes with a bike, they will need to lock it up in the first bike shed they come to. Now that is normally the year 11 bike shed, but the year 11s have all left having completed their exams, so that bike shed is empty. Um, when they come in September, the year 7 bike shed is right at the far end, right at the top of the hill. So uh, you need to uh, get your steps in, get a uh, training, if you are uh, coming up with a bike for September, ready to walk all the way up to the top there. There will be plenty of teachers available to welcome them, um, along with a number of our Year 8 ambassadors as well. Um, they will welcome them, direct them, and escort them to where they need to go next. Students will start the day with an assembly, followed by a session where they'll get to know each other and the school, doing a short tour of the school itself. Amongst other things, our plan is for the students to do the following activities. So getting to know your games, the short tour, have a range of interesting lessons and experiences, and be introduced to the school computer suites. The school day finishes a little bit earlier for year sixes, allowing them to leave at 2.50, so it means they avoid the big rush when everybody else leaves. Um, if you want to come and pick them up at the end of the day, you are free to do so, but we do ask that you stay off the school site just for safeguarding reasons. We do have to insist on that, I'm afraid. Um, but they will be coming to you and there will be teachers escorting them, um, just making sure that they do leave the premises safely. As for what to bring on the day, um, they will need a bag with um, pens and pencils. They can bring a packed lunch, but if they want to eat at the canteen, they will need some money as their WisePay account won't be activated yet. We think about £3 should be sufficient. A positive attitude, though, is probably the most important thing to bring on your first day, and indeed every other day here at Netherhall. If students come with a positive attitude, ready to have a go at anything, even if it means going out of their comfort zone, they are more likely to enjoy a successful time at Netherhall. Now we hope you found this presentation useful and uh, maybe even enjoyable. Uh, for more information, do please go to the addresses that you can see on the screen. Anything relating to the admissions form should go to student records. Um, our website contains a wealth of information about all aspects of the school, and there is a specific page for year six to year seven transition. And on that page, if uh, you've not already seen them, there are the Sway newsletters that we've been sending out. So if you've uh, lost them, mislaid them, want to go back and look at them again, that's where you can find them all. So uh, do please go to, uh, to that page. Um, and if you still have any questions after all of that,
please use the transitions email address and someone will reply just as soon as possible. And that really is just about it from me. Um, we look forward to a successful partnership with you, as it says there on the slide. Um, uh, over the next seven years, we hope that it's not just going to be a year seven to year 11 thing, but uh, that you will also stay with us on Into the Oaks as well. We've got a wonderful sixth form, but I don't have time to tell you all about that. Um, we will be telling you all about that over the course of the next five years, so uh, please wait for that. But uh, I uh, really can assure you, you are going to have a great time here at Netherhall, and we really do look forward to welcoming you all um, back here on Monday. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you.